Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be the first episode in a series I'm going to be doing called Understanding Computer Science and in brackets Game Development. And so in today's video I'm going to be going through different variables. So I'm going to be covering what are variables and then kind of understanding the differences between them. And kind of going through the top nine most common ones I've picked out and just understanding what they are and what they do. So without further ado, let's first start off with what a variable is. So what is a variable? A variable is any factor, trait or condition that can exist in differing amounts or types. So essentially a variable is a box or a space that the computer can use to store a value and that value can change or vary and a program can use as many variables as it needs to. So like I say it's just a designated spot that the code or the, the game engine or whatever you're using can go to and use to find a value for something. So if you set your health to be a certain value, it will be stored in a variable. And so now we're gonna go on to the top nine most commonly used variable types that I found anyway, especially in kind of game development that I think. Uh, so first off, we've got Boolean, which is a true or false value. So this can, like I say, either be true or false, yes or no, or more commonly a binary. So like the computer would use, uh, one or two. So an example of where you would use this is let's say in the class register if you're doing a code for register and you've got say the first student if you want to see if they're here or not you could use a boolean variable called student present question mark or student absent. So if the student is present then you're going to set it to true. So the student is in class so you tick it which means it's true or if you have a student absent and they're still and they're in class you tick it to false so you just leave it blank and it'll be false. So that way it kind of the computer understands that the student is here. So it can then communicate with different computers if you've got a whole school system up or something along those lines. And then the next one is an integer, which is a whole number. So it can be like one or two or three or just something like that. Uh, and it, they're typically between, and I can't remember if this is generally, but it definitely is in Unreal Engine 4, which is a game engine. Uh, the numbers are between minus 2 billion, 147 million, 483,648, and then the positive of that, so positive 2,147,483,637. And this is because this is the highest value a computer can actually count to. So this probably will be quite a general thing that it will go to. So obviously the lowest as well and the highest value. And an examples of where you would use this, uh, for example, let's say you're making a health bar or a stamina bar. You typically either use integer or the next variable I'm going on to. So you'd use numbers and you can use a whole number. So if you've gone from zero to 100, 100 being full health, 0 being 0, or also stamina, so you've got 100, full stamina, 0 is no stamina at all, and you have all the different values in between those two. So then obviously as you decrease health, or as you're running to decrease stamina, you just decrease that number ever so slightly every time, or however much you want it to. And so the next one I've got is a float or real number. So these have quite a few different names, like I say, float and real are the most common ones. Uh, then you also have double or decimal or other names like that, but essentially what these are Whereas it's just a number with a decimal in it. So like an integer is a whole number, a float or real is a number with a decimal place in it. So it can be, for example, 1.051 or minus 4.8693 or like 0 0.1504. So literally any number with a decimal in it. So it's just not a full number. So again, this is good for using as random numbers. So if you want to do like a random loading screen, you would do get a random float in range and the range would be say zero to one. So that's then so that's then nine different values. You have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9. And I think you can also actually have zero and one, but I'm not 100% sure. It also just depends on which code you're using. Then this can also be used for your health and stamina. So if you don't want zero to 100, you can have zero to one. So you still have quite a lot of values in between. It's just not as much. So integer is a whole number float or real is a number with a decimal place in it. The next one I've got is a name. So a variable for name is just a text used that is specifically to name something, i.e. in a game. So if you want to name an apple in a game, or if you want to name a weapon in a game, so a sword or something, this is just so that the computer and also the player knows what is what. And so you commonly use a name variable instead of a string, which I'm going on to next. So like I mentioned, a string is our next one. And a string is just a group of alphanumerical numbers, which is put typically into a readable sentence. Uh, for example, hello world, which is the, the most commonly used one to testing out programs. And an alphanumeric means that it's using both letters and numbers. So like hello world one, two, three, or I have two apples or something along those lines. So it uses both letters and numbers in the string. And the next variable we're going on to is a vector, which is a set of three numbers which is used most commonly for 3D coordinates and RGB data and stuff like that. 
So it's three number, and the three numbers are the x, y, and z values. So for example, you might commonly use this for a location in a game. So you could say the player is at x502, y307, and z 42 or just something along those lines. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be anything specific, but the vector is a set of three numbers, which is most commonly used for 3D coordinates and RGB data, so in like a 3D world or a 3D space. So if you're making a 2D game or like that, something like that, you most commonly wouldn't use a vector. And then kind of linked to this, the next variable is a rotator, which is also a group of numbers that define the rotation of something in a 3D space. So for example, the player might be at these set of vector coordinates, and then the rotator is which way you're going to be facing in the game. So you could say that you're facing either north, east, south, or west, or something like that. But a vector is the coordinates, the rotator is obviously the rotation. And then again, linked with those two, the next variable is a transform, which is a set of data that combines 3D position, translation, rotation, and scale. So for example, if you're creating a 3D model, like in Blender or something, you go between the different transforms. So you go from 3D position, the rotation, and the scale of this object. So it just means you can very easily move it around rotate it and scale it up and down just really easily without having to go through different things. And then finally, last but not least, I've got a character, uh, also commonly used as char or car, however you want to pronounce it, C-H-A-R. And this is literally just characters. So like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five, or exclamation mark, full stop or period, uh, comma, slash, anything like that. It's just basically what you see on your keyboard those are characters. And also space is a character as well, which some people forget. So if you're typing out a sentence on your keyboard, you're using different characters to formulate that string. So I'll just go through the names of them again. We have boolean, which is sometimes called bool or bool, integer, which is sometimes called int, float or real, which is also sometimes called double or decimal, something like that, a name, string, vector, rotator, transform, and character, which is sometimes called car or char, however you want to pronounce it. Different people pronounce it different ways. And just a little bit of credit as well, just to help me formulate a proper definition of a variable, because it was quite hard to get everything that I needed into one. I used help of BBC Bite Size Computer Science, which is a good website to check out, especially if you're English or from the UK, as they give a lot of very good help, especially if you're doing like GCSE or A-level computer science or something like that. So I will link that in the description down below. So I think that'll be it for this video. I've gone through the definition of a variable and what I think the top nine most commonly used variables, or at least the ones that are good to know. So I'll be continuing this series over the next couple of weeks or whatever. So keep updated for that. So I'm going to leave the video here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. It helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.